Salutations! Welcome to Loving the Language of Literacy. My name is Sophia Lee and today I'll be discussing I Was Here by Gail Foreman. I Was Here came out back in January of 2015, so not that long ago. And it's been getting quite a lot of hype, but not necessarily the same kind of hype that If I Stay and Just One Day has gotten. And the general consensus from people is that it's definitely a different kind of novel. It only has a 3.81 average rating on Goodreads because mostly of the darkness and the paths that the story takes that you didn't quite expect from Gail Foreman. This is about a girl named Cody whose entire life is kind of just tossed upside down when her best friend Meg commits suicide. She has to go back to Meg's dorm and just pack up all her things and she kind of is wondering why she didn't know as the best friend that Meg was suicidal and just there was more to it than what met the eye, so it launched her onto this wonderful mystery and just trying to figure out what the heck happened. I've read Just One Day, If I Stay, and Where She Went, and Gail Foreman, I think personally, has definitely gotten better with time. I would not say this is my favorite book by Gail Foreman, that obviously will go to If I Stay, but it's most definitely the most thought-provoking. All her premises are extremely creative, but this one was different. I would actually recommend it for fans of Ellen Hopkins and Lori House Anderson just because of the dark tones. This revolves around a suicide as well as just exposure to the other side of suicide because we always hear books that are talking about suicide and the people trying to help them back off the ledge, so to speak. But in this one, the neo-Nazi group Final Solution actually was encouraging her and just welcoming her into this circle, so to speak, of people who have decided to commit suicide. This was extremely new for me as a reader to read about, and I've never heard about anything like this before, so I'm not quite sure how much of this is fact and how much of this is fiction, but I would guess that Gail Foreman did her research before writing this. My finishing reaction for this was basically, what the hell just happened? Because it is quite a shocking ending. I still can't give this a rating. This is happening to me more and more. Like with Codename Verity, I could not give it a rating to save my life. But for this one, my actual reading experience wasn't the best because until about page, I don't know, 175 or so, I was bored. This definitely didn't have the fast-paced, intriguing qualities that If I Stay or Just One Day had. I was more interested and wanted to see what would happen because I knew that there would be some kind of big explosive ending and I didn't want to be the only one who didn't know what it was so I pushed forward and what I really loved in the end was how Gail Foreman just wrapped everything up and made it such a succinct resolution and how this is why everything happened and this is totally a reasonable answer for everything that has happened but I still can't give it a rating mostly because of how much I wasn't engaged as a reader with my reading experience but how much I wanted to keep knowing what was happening so it's kind of a paradox weird combination. Now if you haven't read the actual book I would say goodbye to you because I do not want to spoil you so goodbye non-spoilery people! Hello! Well I've got a lot to talk about. First of all, there's the plot. The entire time I was basically wondering where the heck is this going because it's all over the place. I had no idea why Cody was so engrossed and invested because I get it. If, I, if my best friend, Emma, who you've seen in videos before, committed suicide, I'd be like, of course I want to know why. But she went through such these depths and it was more the danger she put herself in by going on Final Solution and responding to all BS and it was just terrifying for her and for us as readers as well. There was so much mystery surrounding it and especially when Cody was responding to all BS, I was thinking in my mind, I know she's lost her friend, I know she's grieving, but is she suicidal? I thought that some weird twist would happen and that Cody was actually Meg and some kind of thing that Ellen Hopkins would do with Identical, but then it actually ended up happening. And this book, I Was Here, took such an interesting standpoint, not perspective so to speak, but standpoint on suicide because I've read books about cutting, about eating disorders, about suicidal people, about people in mental hospitals, and I have never actually read anything like this before. It was completely unique in just the way that Gail Foreman presented it and obviously it'd be bad if this triggered anyone, but as someone who, like me, who was not suicidal, it was extremely interesting to see 
the other people's perspective and so-called bravery, which I don't personally believe in, but it was interesting to read about the people who are suicidal or thinking about committing suicide feel. And the romance, I didn't like it. Ben and Cody, it seemed kind of too defaultish. And again, Ben slept with Meg, so why? Why did... Uh, I still don't like them together. I get that they had a common factor bringing them together, but I still didn't like their relationship. What I did love that Gail Foreman does in all of her books was her relationships, especially her family ones, because Cody had obviously had not the best childhood. She called her mom Trisha. They were not a close duo. And her mom throughout the entire book kind of seemed so controlling. But she also seemed compassionate and she wanted to know what her daughter was up to on the internet. Which is of course every parent wants to know. And I loved the way that she just said, where are you? Get on the nearest plane. You're coming home. I'm going to rescue you. And that was so nice to see. There was also the dynamic between Cody and the Garcias and how they were also her real parents during the entire process. And I didn't like so much how she was drifting and pushing them away, but I totally understood it as well. And I loved the position that Scotty took because he seemed so much like a little brother and he reminded me so much of Teddy from If I Stay. And I loved the way that he was not just there to look cute, but he also added to the story itself. Overall, this was a beautifully written, mind-blowing kind of story and all the threads just wrapped up so nicely. I don't have that much to say about this. This is going to be the shortest book topic I've ever done because... Just read it and experience it for yourself if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. Tell me in the comments below if you have read this and what your thoughts were. Keep calm, read on, and I'll see you in a new video. Goodbye!